Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Miller, and I am a Pulmonary Critical Care Fellow at St. Louis University. Today, I will be discussing right heart catheterization waveform interpretation. To begin, we first need to discuss the normal circulation and pressures within the heart. The chart presented here represents a simplified heart with associated circulation. The right atrium receives blood from the inferior and superior vena cava and has a normal pressure range of one to five millimeters of mercury. Blood flows from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The normal right ventricular systolic pressure is 25 and the normal diastolic pressure is five. Blood then exits the right ventricle through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary circulation via the pulmonary artery. A normal pulmonary artery pressure is a systolic of 20 and a diastolic of 10. The blood is oxygenated in the lungs and returned to the left atrium through the pulmonary vein. Blood subsequently flows from the left atrium into the left ventricle via the mitral valve. The left ventricle then pumps blood into our systemic circulation, which ultimately leads back to the right atrium. When we perform a right heart catheterization, we directly measure the RA, RV, and PA pressures. We indirectly measure the left atrial pressures using the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. The pulmonary capillary wedge pressure can then be used to estimate the LA pressure as well as the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. This information can be used to estimate the left ventricular function. Before we jump into interpreting right heart catheter waveforms, we need to briefly review the effect of respiration on the waveforms. As you will see in later examples, the pressure waveforms in the right heart are particularly sensitive to changes in intrathoracic pressure related to breathing. In a spontaneously breathing individual, alveolar pressure decreases relative to atmospheric pressure during inspiration. This allows air to enter the lungs passively down a pressure gradient and inflate the lungs. As the lungs expand, the intrathoracic pressure decreases, which increases venous filling in the heart. These changes are depicted in the simplified cartoon diagram on the left. Under the diagram is a simplified waveform as you can see, the pressure waveform as measured by the pulmonary artery catheter decreases in relation to the inspiratory phase where the intrathoracic pressure is decreasing relative to atmospheric pressure. As you can imagine, expiration has the opposite effect on the pressure waveform. The alveolar pressure is increasing as the lung volume is decreasing. This causes a decrease in venous filling pressure in the heart. These changes are depicted in the simplified cartoon drawing on the right. Under the drawing, you will find another simplified waveform. As you can see, the pressure waveform as measured by the pulmonary artery catheter increases in relation to the expiratory phase, where the intrathoracic pressure is increasing relative to atmospheric pressure. So when during the respiratory cycle is the best time to measure the right heart pressures during a right heart catheterization in a spontaneously breathing individual, we use the end expiratory pressures. Why is that? There are two main reasons. First, end expiratory waveforms are used because the intrathoracic end expiratory pressures most closely resemble atmospheric pressure. Second, you might argue that the intrathoracic pressures at the beginning of inspiration would also closely resemble atmospheric pressures as well. That may be correct, but naturally the expiratory phase is longer compared to the inspiratory phase, allowing more time to identify the best waveform. Let's briefly discuss how positive pressure and mechanical ventilation impact our waveforms. The effect of positive pressure ventilation on the right heart catheterization pressure waveforms is the exact opposite compared to a spontaneously breathing individual. In the case of positive pressure ventilation, the alveolar and intrathoracic pressures increase during the inspiratory phase as positive pressure is being used to inflate the lungs. This impairs venous filling and will cause an increase in the pressure waveform as demonstrated in the picture on the left. In the expiratory phase, the alveolar and intrathoracic pressures will decrease as the positive pressure is released. This will improve venous filling and will cause a decrease in the pressure waveform 
as demonstrated in the picture on the right. So when during the respiratory cycle is the best time to measure the right heart pressures during a right heart catheterization in a mechanically ventilated individual, we use the end inspiratory pressures. Now let's talk about the waveforms and how to interpret them. In the slide, I have presented a rhythm strip and below the rhythm strip is the shape of a typical right atrial waveform. The right atrial waveform as depicted in the picture has three waves and two descents. There is a A wave, a C wave, a V wave, and there is an X descent and a Y descent. Briefly, the A wave represents the pressure increase from atrial contraction. The A wave follows the P wave on the rhythm strip by about 80 milliseconds. The V wave represents passive venous filling of the atria from ventricular systole. The V wave corresponds to the T wave on the rhythm strip. The C wave is sometimes seen and represents the motion of the tricuspid annulus as it moves toward the right atrium at the onset of ventricular systole. It corresponds to the QRS complex on the rhythm strip. The X descent represents atrial relaxation and the sudden downward motion of the atrioventricular junction from ventricular systole. The Y descent represents rapid emptying of the right atrium after the tricuspid valve opens. Here is a right atrial pressure waveform from an actual patient. There are two aspects of this tracing that I want to highlight. First, I want you to appreciate the variation in the waveform with inspiration and expiration. This variation will become more apparent later in this presentation. Second, I want to use this example to learn to identify the A and V waves. As we previously learned, you want to find a waveform that corresponds to end expiration. Find your P wave and T wave on your rhythm strip Draw a line down from the rhythm strip to identify your A wave and V wave. I created a blue line at the P wave, which identified the A wave. The red line corresponds to the T wave on the rhythm strip and identifies the V wave. The A wave pressure is what you will use as your right atrial pressure. When finding the end expiratory pressures, you want to stay away from the waves in the valleys of the variation. Instead, you want, to find, you want to identify the waves that are at the peaks. The RV waveform is morphologically much simpler compared to the right atrial waveform. The right ventricular waveform has a rapid pressure increase during systole as the ventricle is contracting and forcing blood through the pulmonic valve as indicated by the red circle. There is a subsequent rapid decline in pressure after the pulmonic valve opens, allowing blood to exit the ventricle into the pulmonary artery. Interestingly, you will notice that systole is occurring after the QRS complex on the rhythm strip. Why does this occur? This delay is simply a time delay in transmitting the measurements through the long 110 centimeter pulmonary artery catheter. The small black circle represents RV diastole, the pressure change during diastole demonstrates the ventricle's considerable ability to stretch in response to volume increase with minimal change in pressure. In some cases, you may see a small A wave right before ventricular systole. The green arrow represents to, most, to the most likely location of these potential A waves. The A wave represents atrial kick where a final bolus of blood is pumped into the ventricle prior to ventricular systole. Here is a right ventricular waveform from an actual patient. Which waveform do you use to obtain the appropriate measurements? Again, you want to select the wave or waves that corresponds to end expiration. Expiration will cause the waveform pressure to increase. Ideally, you would pick the wave that proceeds the highest waves. I have indicated with the arrows the waves that most likely represent end expiratory pressures. You can see how the RV waveform lags behind the QRS complex on the rhythm strip. You will also need to determine the right ventricular diastolic pressure. You would use the diastolic pressure that precedes the systolic pressure. I have used circles to indicate the diastolic pressures that best correlate with end expiration. Why not pick the highest waves? If the trajectory of the waves is increasing, then exhalation is still occurring. We want to identify the wave that occurs after exhalation is completed, which would correspond to the wave that proceeds the highest wave. On this slide, you will find the pulmonary artery waveform at the bottom with the rhythm strip above it. 
The pulmonary artery waveform is blue in color, starting after the red wave, which represents the RV waveform, as discussed on the previous slide. There are two characteristic features of the pulmonary artery waveform. First, there is a clear increase in diastolic pressure when you compare the right ventricular waveform to the pulmonary artery waveform. This is sometimes referred to as a diastolic step up. Interestingly, the pulmonary artery systolic pressure remains essentially equal to the right ventricular systolic pressure. Second, there is a small peak on the descent side of the wave indicated by the green arrows. This notch corresponds to closure of the pulmonic valve. The pulmonic valve closes after the right, ventri after the right ventricle has emptied its blood volume and the right ventricular pressure drops below the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure. One more thing to mention before moving to the next slide. In relation to the rhythm strip, the peak pulmonary artery pressure occurs within the T wave. This is after the right ventricular peak, since the pulmonary artery systole phase only occurs after the right ventricular pressure has exceeded the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure, which forces the pulmonic valve open. Here is a pulmonary artery waveform from an actual patient. Which waveform do you use to obtain the appropriate measurements? Again, you want to select the wave or waves that corresponds to end expiration. Ideally, you would pick the wave that proceeds the highest waves. I have indicated with arrows the waves that most likely represent end expiratory pressures. I would also like to point out that the pulmonary artery waveform occurs within the T wave on the rhythm strip. You will also need to determine the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure. You would use the diastolic pressure that precedes the systolic pressure. I have used circles to indicate the diastolic pressures that best correlate with end expiration. We will conclude this instructional video by discussing the wedge pressure waveform. As you can see on this slide, the wedge pressure waveform resembles an atrial waveform. As a quick review, the A wave represents the pressure increase from atrial contraction. The V wave represents passive venous filling of the atria from, from ventricular systole. The X descent represents atrial relaxation and the sudden downward motion of the atrioventricular junction from ventricular systole. The Y descent represents rapid emptying of the right atrium after the tricuspid valve opens. There are a couple of important differences between the wedge pressure and the atrial waveforms. The C wave will be absent on a wedge pressure waveform. This occurs because the left atrial pressure is transmitted through the pulmonary capillary bed before it is detected by the pulmonary artery catheter. This will cause the pressure wave to be dampened by the time it reaches the sensor at the tip of the pulmonary artery catheter. Second, there is a significant, there is a significant time delay before you will see the A wave relative to the P wave on the rhythm strip. This time delay occurs because the left atrial pressure wave has to traverse the pulmonary capillary bed as well as the long pulmonary artery catheter before the wave is detected and recorded. Therefore, the A wave usually appears approximately 240 milliseconds following the P wave on the rhythm strip. Usually this means the A wave will correspond to the end of the QRS complex in someone with a normal EKG rhythm. So which wave represents your pul pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? Let's answer that question with an example from an actual patient. First, you need to identify the A waves as we discussed. The A waves will correspond to the end of the QRS complex on the rhythm strip. Second, you want to select the wave or waves that corresponds to end expiration. I have placed two arrows on waves that correspond to the end of the QRS complex and are at the end of expiration. The A wave pressure is essentially equivalent to the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Therefore, the pressures indicated by the arrows would be averaged and reported as the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. This concludes our discussion. Thank you for listening. Don't hesitate to contact each of us by email with any questions or concerns.